Namaskar and welcome to Startup Champions. I'm Shubhendu Ghosh. This is the stage that celebrates the startup talent of India. Let's talk about health. The COVID pandemic, it has caused widespread destruction across the world. We all know about that, but on a hindsight, it has also made us more conscious about hygiene and health needs. Aren't we having more conversations about the needs of public health? Now imagine, COVID is just one of the numerous health challenges facing the humanity. Here, startups can play a crucial role in bringing innovative solutions to traditional problems. In fact, startups who are joining us today are not only bridging the gaps in our health sector, but they're also bringing in technology uh, to make uh, health, to make healing possible for the masses, and importantly, at an affordable cost. We're very happy to welcome the startups who are joining us in the show today. First up, we have with us uh, uh, Niramai Health Analytics. Dr. Geeta Manjunath, founder, is joining us. Warm welcome, Dr. Geeta. Thank you very much, Mr. Ghosh. Can we have it's an applause pleasure. for all the startups who are joining us? And second up, uh, Innovation Medical Devices, uh, Madhukar is joining us uh, uh, from the startup. And let me inform, all our startups are from Bengaluru uh, <laughs> today. And the third startup, Bonayu Life Sciences, uh, Vishal Kataria, founder, is joining us. Vishal, warm welcome to you. And a round of Thank applause so uh, to Thank all you. the startups. And also a round of applause for you, our young audience, who are yeah. always a very special part of the program. Entrepreneurs of tomorrow, thank you very much for joining in and welcome. And now, let me tell you about our mentor and mentors. In fact, we are hoping to connect uh, with two very special mentors today. But first up, we are uh, joining uh, Ashwin uh, Raguraman. Ashwin Raguraman is uh, the founding partner at Bharat Innovation Fund. Warm welcome to you, Ashwin. Thanks very much for joining us today in this program. And at different points in time, we'll be connecting with you uh, to learn about uh, your reflections on the journey of uh, the startups who are joining us today. Thank you. All right, and as we begin, uh, coming back to the pandemic again, let's take a look at the manner in which India looked at the pandemic, the crisis, as an opportunity to move towards the path of self-reliance. The manner in which uh, technology and innovation was put to use, and also how it is an exciting time for startups in the country to join the health sector. Let's take a look. The COVID pandemic has shaken the entire world. Even developed countries were caught unprepared for the onslaught of the deadly pandemic. India's health sector had an unprecedented challenge at hand protecting 130 crore population against a rapidly spreading infection. Agar 2020 health challenges ka saal tha, to 2021 health solution ka saal hone wala. 2021 mein vishwa swasth ko lekar aur jyada jagru ho kar समाधानों की तरफ बढ़े भारत फ्यूचर ऑफ हेल्थ और हेल्थ ऑफ फ्यूचर दोनों में ही सबसे महत्वपूर्ण रोल निभाने जा रहा है जहां दुनिया को कॉम्पिटेंट मेडिकल प्रोफेशनल्स भी मिलेंगे उनका सेवा भाव भी मिलेगा यहां दुनिया को mass immunization ka experience bhi milega aur expertise bhi milega yahan duniya ko health solutions aur technology ko integrate karne wale startups aur startup ecosystem bhi milega ye startups health care ko accessible bhi bana rahe hain or health outcomes go improve each other. India saw an opportunity to transform amidst the crisis of the pandemic. India emerged as the leading manufacturer and exporter of masks and PPE kits. The country also upgraded its capacity to manufacture ventilators. Two made in India COVID vaccines are ready for the nation and the world. Today, world's largest vaccination drive is underway in India. 
The budget presented on 1st February provides a much needed boost to health, nutrition, sanitation and pollution control, all of which will contribute to improved health and well-being. Government to spend Rs. 2,23,846 crore on health in 2021-22, a 137% increase in allocation to health sector from last year. A critical care centre to be set up in every block, 17 health emergency centres to be opened in the country, greater focus on mobile hospitals, health and wellness centres will be opened in villages and cities, investment of Rs. 50,000 crore in National Research Foundation, also to help India's startups amid the COVID-19 pandemic, tax holidays for these businesses have been extended by a year till March 31st, 2022. While the pandemic was raging, startups mitigated the challenge with disruptive tech like telemedicine, online pharmacy, artificial intelligence and data analytics. Today, many startups are working alongside the government to fill the gaps in the health sector. With greater focus on health services, the best time for startups in the sector is now. India converting a crisis into an opportunity. And as I say, best time for startups is now. Let us connect uh, with our mentor to get some initial thoughts uh, uh, on the theme that we are looking at, the health sector. Uh, Ashwin, if we can have you on the uh, mentor wall. Uh, now, there's so much focus, attention on the health sector, also given the pandemic that we are all living through. Uh, how do you see it as an opportune moment for startups to come in and make a point? Absolutely. You, you called it out right, right? The sector has just come into serious focus as far as startups are concerned over the last one year and it's going to, this is a permanent change. Uh, startups in general have been evolving in India mm. and uh, over the last decade or so, the startup activity has increased so much. But specific to healthcare, what has happened in the last one year is really going to change the normal. And there are not, it's not just the pandemic, there are a couple of other initiatives that are being taken up through either Ayushman Bharat or even other government programs, which are really going to give a fillip to the opportunity space mm. that a spark startup can address now when they think about even India as a market. Absolutely. And uh, stay connected with us, Ashwin, as we uh, engage with you uh, further in the program as well. Let's talk about our first uh, startup now, Niramai. Now, as per a uh, report, uh, but first up, uh, importantly, 4th February was World Cancer Day. Yes. And according to a report, uh, the number of cancer cases in India are likely to rise by 20%, by 13 lakhs in 2020 to over 15 lakhs by the year 2025. Now, what is important is that uh, uh, this increase in cases uh, can be checked uh, by timely diagnosis and even cures are possible amongst all the cancers uh, that exist, uh, breast cancer in particular, Honestly, is a big challenge for India. And timely diagnosis could be a matter of it. life and death. But when we talk about breast cancer, even the diagnosis could be a traumatic process for the mind and body of the concerned woman. But one startup is that? changing that. This is the story of Niramai. It's completely curable. Nobody needs to die of breast cancer. But still, we're losing 90,000 women to this. A tragedy that led to creation. A moment of grief that instilled inspiration in this entrepreneur, Geeta Manjuna, who lost two of her cousins to breast cancer and is today helping save lives. Actually, I'm a computer scientist, an accidental entrepreneur, I should say, because I was a lab director at a multinational research organization um, till 2016 and um, uh, one of my cousin's sisters, uh, Bharti, got detected with breast cancer. Uh, she was around 40 years of age. We were very close and uh, uh, it was very shocking for me. The loss of a dear one was the catalyst that created Niramai. A startup that offers easy and portable breast cancer screening solution. With just a small, handy and portable solution like this, 
Niramai, this startup is bringing together hardware, software, artificial intelligence and women health on the same platform and helping detect the largest cause of cancer deaths in women that is breast cancer because early detection is the key to survival. Niramai's solution works for women of all ages for early and accurate breast cancer screening, enabling medical practitioners to detect breast cancer at an earlier stage than traditional methods or self-examination. The technology that we have developed called Thermalytics is a combination of advanced thermal imaging and machine learning. And this technology is very unique, you know, we've got multiple patterns internationally as well. And this is not just limited to breast cancer, this can be used for several other type of cancers, other type of abnormalities in the body. For radiologists, this is the advantage in two aspects. One is, it will detect, uh, detect and give us the where is the lesion is there, one. Second one, sometimes there won't be any lesion, but still we'll suspect if there is any hot points or that. So majority of them, they'll come with a pain. And if mammogram or ultrasound shows normal, but thermography can detect the site of pain. And other thing is, uh, this is especially useful for large populations especially when you go out for a campaign where you can do 50 to 100 scans in a day. With a very strong team of women on ground, Niramai with its thermography-based solution is creating awareness amongst women in urban as well as rural areas with regular camps, where a thermal device is placed at 3 feet in front of the person capturing thermal images. We are the only Indian startup listed on the top 100 AI startups in the world. We put Niramai puts India on the AI, artificial intelligence world map. Niramai has employed a young and enthusiastic team of skilled professionals and also aims at catering nano entrepreneurs at ground level to take the solution to masses. So we have screened over 33,000 women so far uh, in camps, in rural areas, in corporate camps, in hospitals, in uh, home screening recently and, all, and in buses as well. Um, and, and women really love our solution. We have found more than 1,000 women who have you know, had cancer or early cancer or pre-cancer. And the doctors are very happy because uh, mammography is uh, uh, not usable on women under 45 years of age. With artificial intelligence, thermolytics and IT, this healthcare startup has broken limitations of screening in the healthcare sector, promoting breast cancer awareness in women across all ages making screening accessible, affordable and efficient with its innovative initiative. And we are at a very important point in our program. Uh, renowned uh, cardiac surgeon, health entrepreneur, uh, Dr. Devi Prasad Shetty is uh, now joining us. Uh, Dr. Shetty, what a wonderful opportunity to have you here on this program for startups. Uh, thank you very much for joining in, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Sir, we've My been talking place. about, right, sir, we've been talking about the, the pandemic, the post-pandemic world, the health challenges that have come in. But from you first, sir, we'd like to have a perspective on the significance of startups in health sector as you see them. You're also known for your innovations in the health sector. Tell us about how significant you think startups are today. Uh, first of all, every big multi-billion dollar multinational company at some point of time was a startup. It would have started in a garage or in a shed. Just the dream and passion of one or two people who joined together and worked for a mission. And in the end, uh, it becomes a great, great company. So we didn't really have a culture of uh, innovation and starting uh, startups uh, mm. to the level like what it is in the Western countries. But with the government promoting startup culture very aggressively, also the entrepreneurs, the philanthropists and the investors betting on them has made the startup world real in India. Now, if you really want to transform a sector like health sector, the only option we have is to in encourage startups to work in an environment of the hospital, constantly interacting with the doctors, nurses, technicians, 
understanding our pain points, understanding the pain points of the patients, and come up with an affordable, uh, safe solution. Right. Uh, uh, Dr. Shetty, also, uh, we, we know you as someone who revolutionized uh, healthcare in the country in making the best healthcare facility available at affordable, at the lowest cost uh, possible. Uh, on that front, sir, how significant uh, does low cost but high quality healthcare continues to remain relevant in the country? Uh, it's the cost of healthcare is not just an Indian problem. Hmm. It is a global problem. Uh, global healthcare and wellness industry is the largest industry in the world, much bigger than the food industry, which is $8 trillion. Healthcare right. industry is over $8.2 trillion. It's a massive industry. Hmm. But the sad thing is, after spending $8.2 trillion, not more than 20% of the world's population has access to secondary, tertiary quality healthcare. Nearly 80% of the world's population do not have access to advanced cancer treatment or a cardiac procedure. Something is dramatically wrong with the way healthcare is delivered today. It has to change. Healthcare has to become safer. Healthcare has to become affordable and also accessible. In, in India, where healthcare is available, only in big cities, for any of the major intervention, in spite of we having so many hospitals, right. say oncology, how many cancer hospitals are there in India? So we need to really come up with a different model of delivering healthcare. And that can only happen by the uh, startups. Absolutely, sir. And you mentioned uh, cancer. I'm happy to share that uh, very bright, brilliant, awarded startups are present in the studio and they're watching you uh, as we speak. Uh, uh, in fact, I'll encourage them to uh, just reach out to you, the questions that they want to ask and points that they want to raise. Uh, if we can start sure. with you, Dr. Manjana. Sure. sure. Uh, hello, sir. I'm Geeta from Niramai, where we have developed a new method of detecting breast cancer. And we have uh, done many, many camps as well in rural areas where we can make a health worker uh, decide, triage whether a lady requires to be brought to a hospital or not. I'm a huge fan of you and your vision uh, to make this possible in India, sir. So my question to you, sir, is uh, uh, given that there is a, a, you know, a new initiative uh, this year for preventive and wellness centers in rural areas, uh, you know, what would be the best way to reach out? And because government is the route to actually reach out millions of women mm. in India. So your advice on how we should get started and, and, and how do we make this happen on the ground, uh, given that we have actually done many trials uh, with uh, so cancer societies and NGOs, sir? See, the uh, scaling up is the biggest challenge, which you have to see what is the model of scaling up. Mm. Now, uh, once you have the validation from the authorities and the uh, various regulatory bodies and the medical uh, commission say that, yes, we trust the report coming from the uh, your gadget, which I'm sure it has already established. Yes, sir. Now, it is a matter of scaling up. The scaling up by tying up with various hospitals and uh, hospitals will not be happy to make a upfront payment and buy your machine. Okay. Best thing is to give it to them free of cost, okay. but for every procedure they do, you are, obviously the hospital is charging some amount of money. So you can take a percentage of the, uh, uh, the hospital fees okay. that you can decide. That is the easiest way for you to scale up. But if you're going to do that, my suggestion is you have to choose one particular city okay. and try it out first to understand the nuances of all these uh, the modalities because you shouldn't be in a situation wherein you have borrowed a huge amount of money and you have distributed all over the place, but nobody is using it. Sure. Whereas if it is in one city, you'll be able to advertise. And when you advertise, patients have the option to go to multiple centers. So essentially, you have done a great job in creating something. Now you should be even more innovative in marketing it and making yes. it a financially successful venture. Otherwise, all your dream and aspiration will just evaporate uh, without really touching the, uh, the people who need it. In the end, it, right. it is not you fail. 
in the end desperately poor people who have access to diagnose their cancer at an early stage you have failed them all right that that was uh, dr devi shetty renowned uh, cardiac surgeon and entrepreneur so let's talk about our uh, first startup uh, niramai dr geeta manjunath uh, is with us uh, founder dr manjunath uh, we we understand that uh, diagnosis is very crucial in any case of any cancer but for breast cancer in particular but we also learned how the process of diagnosis and traditional method can be very difficult and painful uh, uh, for women uh, how is your startup changing that and how difficult has it been so far yeah honestly breast cancer is one of the largest uh, cancer incidences seen right you know uh, recent report says not just in female overall you mm. know if you look at the number of cancer cases breast cancer is Uh, by far the highest number of incidences seen in right? india in, the in india globally as well right, right? in every country in mm, fact mm, right mm. so the unfortunate thing is that though india contributes only 20% of the incidences in the whole world we contribute to 50% of the deaths which means early detection is so critical mm. to save lives and we are not able to do early detection in india and the reason for that like uh, dr shetty mentioned is multiple affordability accessibility in addition uh, today's methods mm. um, you know are not uh, really suitable for the indian population because indian population is more younger population for example mammography which is a very good test to detect early stage breast cancer uh, apart from being non affordable to many it also doesn't work on what's called as dense breasts who are under 45 and right. most women or actually 50% of the women uh, who get breast cancer in india are under 40 under 50 so this is a huge problem as you also mentioned the experience of taking a test with mammography hmm. is also slightly you know uh, uncomfortable i would say because 10 sure. kg of weight is applied so what we do is um, instead of using x rays we just measure uh, the temperature variations on the chest using a very simple thermal sensor and um, because of this uh, the test can be completely no contact mm. uh, you know no touch no see as and we say and that's the device so yes, can you not if you could device. show to us this is a very simple uh, device uh, which is many of you would have seen this in uh, covid screening and so on right the thermal sensor that's what this is this is a much more high resolution it's like a thermometer but it can give 4 lakh temperature points per mm. person so we actually keep this in front of the device and control this remotely and so we just have a booth the lady enters into the booth she takes uh, about uh, you know 2 minutes of imaging that's all is needed 10 minutes of cooling and and that's it nobody would have seen her nobody would have touched her mm. her report can be ready so it's as simple as that thanks to thermal imaging right. and artificial intelligence based software that niramai has developed A truly transformative uh, health solutions at this point in time let's also connect uh, with our mentor ashwin uh, continues to be with us uh, Ashwin thank you for your patience uh, the transformative uh, health solution uh, by Niramai how do you see uh, their journey and also the solution that they're providing yes when i've been seeing the niramai journey uh, over the past few years as it has evolved uh, from right. a distance and it's amazing how they've progressed over time right um, you know it's it's very interesting a lot of healthcare startups and this is a good example niramai has actually been born out of a personal experience Uh, mm. that the entrepreneur had and kudos to geeta uh, to have the courage to say i leave a very cushy job a uh, well paying job in a large mm. mnc and then say i will create a startup that will solve a real problem which is there both on the affordability side as well as just you know solving a big big healthcare problem in india there's one in 30 women uh, who are at risk of breast cancer Uh, and if you look at the indian population of a billion and assuming this is part you know close to 45% are women you are really trying to solve a huge problem that exists in india and i do think that niramai should really start thinking now given that they've reached so far as to how they can address a significant percentage of this problem the second piece that i see their journey evolving into is also i think geeta alluded to that how well can they start addressing a global problem as well because the minute you've got an affordable device the concept of reverse innovation kicks in which is build in india make in india for the world and the ability to create affordable devices right. 
is right. a lot more in India simply because you you only have a certain amount of paying capacity here. Mm -hmm. But once you've created it, your solution becomes applicable globally. So that's the other interesting market that uh, I think Nirabai will start looking at if they already have it. Right there, Ashwin. Thank you very much for your thoughts. You. Uh, also, Dr. Manjunath, uh, Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shaw uh, of Biocon uh, also has something special to share about your startup. Let's listen in. Of course, in the past, there was always a fear factor associated with breast checkups because of how painful mammograms were. But today, we have a new solution which is being provided by a very exciting young startup called Nirmai, who actually have come up with a thermo profiling technology which actually creates a heat map of uh, tissue and thereby detects the smallest of uh, lesions in breast cancer. And this I think is a very exciting time because these are non-intrusive and painless kind of interventions for breast screening. And I encourage every young girl over the age of 25 to start doing annual checkups using these kind of technologies. I think Niramai has a huge potential because I think breast screening and annual breast checkups are going to be very important going forward. So anyone over the age of 25 ought to go and get a breast checkup done using a Niramai breast checkup uh, technology. The wonderful words of encouragement there uh, by Dr. Vajumdar and also transformative startup uh, there, Dr. Manjunath. Uh, let's move on to our second startup now. We're talking about Innovation Medical Devices. It's a startup that believes that speech, spoken word, is not a privilege, it's a right. They are working towards uh, creating technology for voice restoration uh, for patients of uh, throat cancers who undergo surgery and they developed uh, own voice prosthetic that we learn about. Let's take a look at their fascinating journey. Speech as a right, not as a privilege. God created a universe in which they gave us a voice box for free for everybody when we were all born. Silence can be scary, especially for the people who lose their voice to throat cancer. Life turned upside down 13 years ago for Sudhidra an engineer and businessman in Bangalore when he was detected with throat cancer. The thought of not being able to speak crossed his mind every now and then with several devices in the market. He tried speaking but not with much clarity and had already spent a lot on devices until 2016 when Dr. Vishal implanted his innovative low-cost device to help him speak with greater clarity. I have been using this process for the last one and a half years. There was no change. But still I feel very, very glad that I can converse very clearly. The motivation for us came from that one single patient who was a security guard who couldn't speak. He had lost his voice box and lost his job. And my core thought was, can I bring back his voice and get him back his job? Moving ahead to solve the issue Dr. Vishal set up in our mission, a medical device company in 2016 and along with co-founder Shashank Mahesh and built the Ohm Voice Prosthesis which is the mold of the voice box prosthetics made out of silicon. An affordable device which enables throat cancer patients who have lost their voice box to speak again. This is a simple uh, uh, one centimeter device that weighs one gram and uh, we have about seven patents on this, uh, all innovative and um, thought-provoking, um, uh, simply what this device does is it fits into your throat and it converts your food pipe into a voice box. It basically cheats the brain to convert the food pipe as though the food pipe is behaving like a voice box. And through this we are able to speak again. Several patients have got the device implanted and are currently able to speak. Many of them have got their voice back after several years. One of them which I can fondly recollect was a politician from Tamil Nadu. Gone into severe depression at several bouts and he even attempted uh, to end his life thinking that he'll never be able to speak again. We fitted the voice box for him and he spoke, uh, I, I, th I think he spoke continuously with me for about 15 minutes in Tamil which I didn't understand. But the joy and the love that he showered on us to say thank you 
for giving his voice was for me something very special. I think you should see the first uh, expression the patient makes when they hear their own voice. You know, we have had uh, patients who are not spoken for 15 years. The device comes with an assistive kit and many beneficiaries have got it implanted under the Ayushman Bharat scheme. I'm, I'm happy to say that with these innovations, we have more than 500 plus patients speaking across the world and we've taken it to nearly nine countries now. With a mantra of speech is a right and not privilege, this startup is changing lives by offering something that is One, invaluable yet two, extremely precious. Three. A Four, voice. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a brilliant journey of innovation medical devices. And Madhukar, founder, is with us. Uh, Madhukar, great to have you with us. Great to see your journey. I'm very curious. You're also carrying the device uh, for yes. us to see. We've made a small little innovation where we've embedded the device into the, the visiting card. And that's card. how small it is. It's just about a centimeter. I can pull it out for you. There you go. That's the device. This is PC. This is amazing and such a small device, but so transformative. Absolutely. Bringing back a voice of a person. Yes. Madhukar, I'm really curious to ask, uh, how do you feel the first time uh, a patient, a person is able to thank you in his or her own voice when you put that device into that? So, like uh, Dr. Vishal mentioned in the huh. video, uh, the first uh, patient was a security guard. He hadn't spoken for close to five years. And uh, uh, primarily because of uh, expensive devices available, uh, he was not in a position to pay for them uh, and come back to treatment. And uh, he was advised to live without a voice mm -hmm. and be happy with the fact that he's recovered from cancer. But uh, that is something that disturbed Dr. Bushal very, very much. And uh, that is what drove him, uh, along with Shushank, uh, our co-founder, to come up with the solution, reverse engineered, made in India to uh, help these patients speak again. This, this device is a very, very simple uh, prosthetic device made out of a very high-grade platinum-cured medical-grade silicon, mm. uh, which, uh, when implanted, connects the food pipe to the air pipe and thereby makes the uh, food pipe vibrate, which produces the voice. And uh, the first time this patient came to us and had the voice box fitted mm. and, and spoke, mm. uh, he was in tears. Uh, and, and that is what made us realize that this mm. is what we should be doing. Innovate for a single patient and the markets and masses will follow. And Madhukar, you say you innovate for the masses. How much does it cost? If you can give us a comparison of how much does uh, another form of uh, such voice prosthetic cost? You have uh, available devices, imported ones, which cost anywhere between 35 to about 50, 55,000 rupees. Mm. And uh, currently our solution uh, is available in the market at 8,000 rupees. Mm. But uh, that's not the only uh, approach for us, uh, the market. Uh, we have a, a few approaches as far as pricing is concerned. Mm. Uh, so we've looked at the Ayushman Bharat uh, model under which a patient from uh, the weaker sections of the society uh, is available, uh, is, is in a position to pick up this device absolutely free of cost. The government funds uh, the whole uh, device and the treatment to him. Uh, then you also have um, a model where uh, you have patients who don't essentially cover, uh, come under the Ayushman Bharat scheme, right. but also are in a position where they cannot afford expensive treatments. And when mm. I say expensive, they were not in a position to even afford the 8,000 rupees that uh, we charge for the device. So for such patients, we have a foundation which uh, is, is connected to the company mm. called the Om Foundation. The Om Foundation is raising funds and through that we enable and support these patients by giving out these devices free of cost. That's the second model. And then we have a commercial model where uh, patients who ha are in a position to buy these devices from us, pick it up from or have, go to private hospitals, the best of surgeons, and, and get themselves um, this device once again. Uh, Dr. Shetty, if I can uh, now introduce the second startup you, uh, who's joining us. Uh, Innovation uh, is with us. Madhukar is with us. What they do is uh, uh, they, they create voice prosthetics, uh, uh, particularly useful for people who've undergone uh, throat cancer treatments to get their voice back. Madhukar, founder, is with us. Madhukar, what would you like to ask, commenter? Good afternoon, Dr. Shetty. Uh, it's afternoon. an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And uh, I've been a big fan of the kind of work that you've been doing. Thank you. Uh, Thank, till, you. Uh, Thank you, Madhukar. Being a startup from Bangalore with the limited resources and the point that you mentioned uh, of startups having to focus on being um, coming, out of, coming out with solutions which are affordable and accessible. Uh, we, uh, in fact, at Innovation follow that mantra of uh, making our uh, device, the own voice prosthesis, an affordable, affable and accessible solution. But uh, we've managed to make the device affordable, 
We've managed to make it simple enough for people to use the surgeons to insert the device. But access to accessibility to the market has been a big challenge for us. So how do you think a startup with limited resources like ours uh, would be able to address that issue? See, the first thing is the market. Market for you is very small because the clients who need your support are not very large. Absolutely. Mm. But good thing is in a few days you will get to know the number of doctors who will be able to utilize it. So you have to zero down on the doctors who are in that area specializing who may be your clients to uh, use this uh, uh, device. So once you uh, do that, then you have to really choose five or ten of them and invest on them as how they how do they uh, because in the end no patient will come to you directly. Great. They have to go to the doctors. So somehow you have to rope them in to be your uh, supporter and a sponsorer. Once you are you have done it successfully, then it will be easy because. Doctors generally look at the precedents. If you have tied up with few doctors in one city and they have been successful, doctors are happy, you are happy, then it will catch up very fast. The biggest problem I find with the startup, they all get distracted very fast. Uh, th this is the biggest problem because you, after some time you see the next opportunity and you start jumping into that. So this is the mistake what uh, most of the startups do. Unless your first product is successful and financially viable to start, you know, pay for all your dreams and aspirations, you go from one to the other, in the end you will not succeed because irrespective of the usefulness, society is very, very slow to embrace technology. So let's also get some thoughts from our uh, mentor who sure. continues to be with us. Uh, Ashwin uh, Raghuraman is uh, with us. Ashwin. Uh, we just saw the story of innovation, uh, not just uh, transformative innovation changing lives, but also affordable as compared to other technologies and options available. How crucial is that factors for, factor for Indian startups in the health sector? Let me first start by saying what a lovely name. What yes. an innovative name itself, innovation, right? And, uh, you know, just listening to what Madhukar was saying, uh, Indian patients look, look at doctors as gods, right, traditionally. And I'm sure anybody who's got his voice back looks at Madhukar like he's a god now. And I can just only imagine the feeling uh, that he must be getting when a patient gets his voice back. Uh, your, your question is very important. See, the, the data says hmm. that the per capita spend in India on medical devices is roughly $5. The global average is $50 per uh, capita. And in the US, that's $500. And therefore, the purchasing power for you know, devices like these, which are very important for you to even sustain any level of quality of life is extremely important. And uh, Madhukar has therefore been able to deliver to a patient population, which can only afford something and then deliver a quality of life. Uh, I, I do think that apart from the fact that you are uplifting patients who have not been able to afford devices, uh, there are other aspects of it, which are also how profitable you are, right? When you're delivering it at that cost. And I'm sure that uh, Madhukar and team Innovation have been able to innovate affordably using technology and not just by bringing down quality. And I think that's the crux of uh, affordable innovation and extremely important for a nation like India. Great, there, Ashwin, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, please do stay connected. Let's now talk about our third startup, Bonayu Life Sciences. It's a nutrition supplements company. Now, they're revolutionizing the manner in which nutrition is carried into the human body. We are familiar with syrups for nutrition. We are familiar with tablets for nutrition. But have you thought of a thin strip that quickly dissolves in the mouth when you put it? Let's look at the fascinating journey of Bonayu. The world of medicine or drug administration has evolved with time. From concoctions to tiny tablet, capsules, injections, topicals and what not. Defying traditional methods, a startup called Bonayu in Bengaluru, started by a brother and sister team, is introducing a new way to take your daily dose of nutrition and medicines by oral dissolvable thin films. If I tell you that a small strip like this 
can give you the nutrition of having a glass or more than a glass of turmeric milk or a small strip like this can give you the experience of having green tea then it will come as a surprise for you but a startup called bonayu life sciences is changing the way people consume medicines and is bringing a phenomena in the sector of nutraceuticals we thought of coming up uh, with a format which is not only highly palatable but very very effective compared to tablet or a capsule that is uh, available in the market my expertise uh, for that matter has been in the process engineering side in the pharmaceutical industry bhavna had worked in the ma uh, uh, management side in the pharmaceutical industry so we both thought of uh, setting up a small uh, r&d unit with a credible team of scientists engineers nutritionists working to bring simplification ease of use and healthy living bonayu has created wide array of solutions the product line comprises of mouth dissolving strips topical application strips gummies and shots for various supplement needs with natural ingredients in most of them when we are developing a product the first step will be like uh, will i consume this if i am a customer we have three categories oral topical and dental so in oral we have different multivitamins and we have curcumin immunity boosters and then uh, uh, we have uh, this herbal herbal extract strips and when it comes to topical we have glutathion patches acne patches and anti aging patches and uh, dental category we have uh, teeth whitening teen sensitivity so we have three wide categories of uh, range The films are usually designed to dissolve after contacting the tongue within seconds with no need for water making ingestion easy for children improving effectiveness and ease of use Bonayu is creating its space in the market of nutraceuticals we've always seen our supplements coming in the form of tablets or pills uh, which then it does become an issue especially with children and elderly people uh um, the the uh, you know the kind of products they've got especially the the films is much easier for kids because it's more palatable um it has better absorption it can be taken on the go uh, so you don't have chances of missing it you don't have to have water to be able to consume it um and you enjoy the taste potential investors are also looking at bonayu's wide range of products in the market with expectations we got our first angel investment uh, from the us market just open the foil packaging retrieve the thin film and place it on the tongue to dissolve this new way of taking medicines has started upstaging tablets injections and much more bonayu has opened up another yet a better way to get your daily dose of health it's a brilliant journey of bonayu life sciences and Vishal founder is with us Vishal did you have a lot of bitter medicines as a child where did this idea come to you I think uh, you're right uh, we thought and we always had it in our mind that medicines have to be swallowed uh, hmm. or they are always bitter in taste so you need a glass of water you don't enjoy the medicine because the doctor has told you you have to take the medicine uh, given a choice you would like that a medicine is not only palatable hmm. uh, but it should be very very effective also so what you see on a bonayu platform uh, uh, in the form of a thin film there's a lot of technology behind it uh, when i say technology behind it it's not only about the palatability hmm. it's about the absorption also hmm. so when it comes down to the thin films these are only second best to the injections that are available in the hmm. uh, market you mean But in terms of absorption in terms you of also carrying those strips uh, oh, for why not see. i show you one of our vitamin d thin films wonderful yeah so let me just take it out for you so these are very very thin films which can deliver very high dosages and it's safer for individuals to ingest absolutely safe Right, right. You just put it on the tongue, mm -hmm. and this gives you close to two thousand IU of vitamin D on your tongue itself. Wow, that's But amazing. But the beauty of it is that it gets absorbed into the blood rather than going into the stomach, then uh, metabolized, getting metabolized, and then getting absorbed in the blood, which takes thirty to forty-five minutes. But in case of thin films, it just happens within five minutes, which basically means the onset of the drug or the active happens. within 5 minutes so it's not only about the palatability 
but also about the effectiveness compared to any other delivery. Right. Uh, Dr. Shetty, uh, that also brings us to the third startup who's joining us today, Bonayu Life Sciences. Uh, they are into nutrition supplements uh, uh, work and development. Uh, what they've done is, uh, you know, we can be, uh, uh, we may not like to take tablets or injections all the time as far as nutrition uh, related uh, inputs are concerned, but they've developed a thin strip uh, that dissolves in the mouth when you put it. So that's the innovation that they've come up with. Uh, and Vishal, the founder, is uh, here with us. Vishal, what would you like to ask our mentor? Thank you so much, uh, Sunando. Uh, you are a role model, uh, sir, for everybody, uh, I believe. So thank you. thank you so much for giving us the time. My question to you is, uh, uh, Banayu Life Sciences uh, has developed oral thin, mouth dissolving oral thin films as a delivery platform for delivery of any kind of uh, drugs nutraceuticals or uh, any other actives that can be incorporated in this particular platform. And this platform has much more advantages compared to a tablet, capsule or a syrup um, to uh, take, the, take the drugs. And uh, uh, very few of the innovations uh, have happened, especially in the delivery system uh, uh, formats uh, globally. Hmm. Uh, we are the proud um, patent holders of this particular innovation, um, uh, sir. But we want to uh, uh, take your guidance as well as uh, uh, your experience on how do we scale up this kind of a delivery system, especially in the healthcare sector, uh, to deliver drugs to the uh, pediatric or the geriatric uh, population, sir. Uh, I mean, I am not an expert in this area, but my suggestion uh, after hearing your story, my suggestion is first you should look at pediatric population as your clientele initially, because they are the ones who are reluctant to chew the tablet, I mean take the tablet. Now, after you have identified uh, a particular product which you think may be the right uh, uh, medication or a uh, the food supplement which children have to take because children have to take a lot of uh, nutritional uh, supplements as well. Mm. So after you decided on one, one medicine, then you have to identify the company which is making it and you have to work with them closely because I guess without their cooperation, you may not be able to market it. And if the company becomes your partner, then your job is done because they have hundreds of marketing people who will go around the countryside trying to sell your product. I think you should really look at one of the pharmaceutical companies to partner with you. So uh, let's turn to our mentor. Uh, Ashwin uh, continues to be with us. Ashwin, uh, nutritional supplements are reality of the modern times, but uh, the manner in which uh, Bonayu has given a distinct uh, identity, uh, what kind of an advantage does it give to them in this particular sector of nutritional supplements? Yeah, I think uh, the whole wellness segment is exploding, mm -hmm. right? In terms of uh, just there being so much more awareness uh, that is emerging, the shift from, uh, you know, health to wellness uh, as, a, as a means to good health. And uh, so the convenience of this uh, delivery mechanism is obvious. And I was just thinking to myself, we, you know, there are some of us who keep traveling, we, we lead hectic lives now. Mm -hmm. And just to be able to take a small thin film from your pocket, when you're on the road, when you're in a cab, and just pop it into your mouth, whether it's a green tea uh, type of a supplement that you're adding, just the convenience of it is fantastic. And I think that's one advantage. But I was a lot more interested in hearing something else uh, that they mentioned, which is the efficacy is higher as well. Absolutely. And supplements in general have been known, their absorption levels have been known to be low uh, through various studies that have been conducted. And to therefore come with a delivery mechanism where the absorption level of a supplement that you are taking uh, mm. is improved, I think gives them a big advantage, not just in India, but globally as well. Uh, the road ahead, how do you see it? The engagement between uh, the traditional health sector, health structure and the startups. Do you see more engagements happening uh, in the coming future? The necessity of it, how do you see it panning out, sir? Uh, the advice I have for all the startups Doctors are very, very difficult to work with because when you come up with an idea, 
that this is what you want to do. We will, as doctors, tell you exactly what we want. And you know very well, as the technical person, that the solution, how it should be done, may not be the right, that is not the best way. You know it. But do not ever tell the doctor that he is wrong. Tell him that, okay, what he is saying is a fantastic idea, let me do it for you. With difficulty, do it the way he wants, the doctor wants, but also show it to him and he will find so many glitches, then you show the real solution what you have in mind. You can politely say that, sir, this works much better than what we thought earlier. And never say the doctor is wrong. You say that uh, we did a mistake, sir, in uh, going in that way, but this is a better solution. And once he uses it, he will love it, and then he is your fan forever. This is fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing your perspectives, your vision, and your wit and humor, Dr. Shetty. Always a pleasure uh, connecting with you in our program. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. Sir. At this point, let me take some quick questions from our audience members who have been sitting very patiently here as well. Quick questions, if you can just raise your hand. Yeah, go on, shoot. My question was that uh, when we start a business, like uh, we have heard of Jeff Be uh, Bezos, the founder of uh, Amazon, Amazon hmm. and uh, he has uh, got 100 failures before the Amazon company. How many failures all of you have faced before this success? And what problems have you faced and how we should come over that problems? How to overcome failures? I'll take yeah. the responses from one of the startups. Dr. Manjunath, if you can share with us uh, your mantra for that. Sure. Uh, so from my side, uh, I was an intrapreneur uh, before uh, becoming an entrepreneur. What that means is within the company, mm -hmm. like Hewlett Packard and Xerox Research, I was a research scientist proposing newer ideas uh, to the business. So I had this cushion of financial uh, you know, risk right? Mm -hmm. that we could uh, afford. So we, I have worked on more than 30 different ideas and six of them have uh, become some form of product within Hewlett Packard and Xerox earlier. So, but yeah, 25 others have not become that. And uh, I've also been a lab director, so you know, mentoring others uh, in the failed and also successful uh, ideas uh, has given me a lot of learning. But Amazing, it's a very so good, success and failure went question. hand in hand. My question is that uh, when you are initially state in your setup, uh, when you discuss your ideas with your family members and closer one, what the uh, reactions they uh, give, they they give you. Okay, what kind of support, uh, Madhukar? If you'd like to answer that one, uh, those should. initial ideation stage, how was it for you? So, uh, in in the case of uh, innovation medical devices, uh, this was pretty much uh, the idea of Dr. Bushal, but shared with uh, family and friends. And I, uh, being part of Dr. Bushal's extended uh, friend circle, uh, we've had a lot of these discussions on how he wanted to take this forward. Uh, being a, a health practitioner, a medical practitioner, uh, he understood the healthcare. Uh, side of things, but uh, 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 a medical business or a healthcare business mm -hmm. is is about the amalgamation of the business side along with the healthcare delivery, and uh, that is where uh, you know his friends, uh, family were able to bring in. Uh, he, uh, his wife is a, a practicing uh, advocate, so she was able to uh, look at uh, all the legal uh, implications of setting up the business and, and guide. So till today, uh, we have a very very big involvement of the family. Uh, that goes hand in hand to help mm -hmm. us uh, in our day to day business lives. Okay. Ma'am, as you said that uh, you are working in rural area as well as in urban area, ma'am, do you find difficulty uh, while explaining your concept to rural areas people, or especially to the women? Because at a certain point, uh, the people don't talk about sanitary napkins over there. So, yeah. how are you able to uh, give their message, give message of yours to them? Yeah. No, actually in rural areas it is much easier to convince them, right? Like, uh, you know, Dr. Shetty was talking about, right? Uh, first, uh, you can try out new. I'm not saying we will do bad for the rural people, but when you actually go and say, we're going to look at your breast health and tell you whether you're healthy. In fact, we have received very, very positive response. One is we don't see or touch the person, so that is good. And also the second is, just like sanitary napkins is a taboo word, breast is also a taboo word. Mm. I don't know why, it's just like hand or leg, right? So when we go and talk to them about it, they're so happy. There is somebody who is coming in asking about their problems there. So we have found it very, very helpful. Again, you have to relate to their mindset and talk in their own language. Apart from that, they're very supportive. Right, and Vishal, if I can just bring a final question to you about uh, support of the family. You and your sister 
uh, started this uh, venture. So for you, it's like the family really uh, came together uh, like never before. How was it for you? I think, uh, yeah, family plays a very, very important role. Uh, I'll give you an analogy uh, here. It's only fam family probably who thinks you are the most intelligent. Rest of the people think you are a fool only when you enter into entrepreneurship. Uh, so it's good to bring the family <laughs> along. <you know. laughs> because they're the only ones who really believe uh, that uh, you can uh, and the, you can do this. And in my particular case, especially in Bonayu Life Sciences, hmm. uh, when we discussed uh, this idea amongst ourselves, uh, between my sister and... Uh, Myself, both of us were uh, coming from the pharmaceutical industry and uh, had worked for a couple of years, uh, close to 20 years in the pharmaceutical industry itself and at senior levels. So uh, when I told my wife that I want to quit the job and start the, start mm. the business, um, she was like, are you going to really do anything in your life uh, which is going to be successful or are you going to keep doing R&D whole of your life itself? So. Uh, but the family really, really supported uh, uh, because this is a very, very risky business. Uh, it's, the success doesn't come so easily uh, uh, here, as you rightly said, uh, how many failures you, uh, you had. Uh, in our case, I think every six months uh, at Bon IU, we, we would have what we call as a near-death experiences. So near-death experiences oh would mean that we would be almost at a point where we would be closing so the company. Perseverance and patience would also be a key, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, Vishal. Yeah. Great, great, great. Thank you for sharing those experiences. And uh, well, that's all the time we had in this edition of Startup Champions. Uh, let me thank all the participants, beginning with our mentor, Ashwin Raghuraman. Thank you so much for joining us. Your insights are going to be very, very useful for the startups who are here and the startups entrepreneurs who are watching this program. Thanks very much for being a part of Startup Champions. Thank you. It was fantastic being here. What a pleasure to listen to all the entrepreneurs. Great. Thank you. And thank you also to our startups, Dr. Manjunath, Madhukar, Vishal. The pleasure hosting you here and learning about your inspiring journey. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you also to our wonderful audience with, with excellent questions that you uh, uh, put in the last moment. A round of applause for all of you and all the startups who are present here. And as we uh, come towards the conclusion of the program, uh, we'd like to talk about the kind of impact that Startup Champions is already having. This is vis -vis our previous episode. Take a look. Uh, ever since our last uh, DD Startup Champions episode, I'm very happy to inform that we have partnered with National Skill Development Corporation and we are conducting mobile robotics skill competition for all the CBSC students from 8th standard to 12th standard Pan India. Any student can come and register on our www.holoeducation.one platform and the student, their teachers as well as the schools will be eligible to win exciting awards like these robots that you see above. Similarly, we have partnered with Agastya International and NGO which is working with us to bring these type of mobile robots as well as virtual education to any school near you on their mobile ones as well as on mobile phones through our hollow education platform. We are also very happy to share that we have received investment from Kitaki which is a New Zealand based venture fund to take and expand this concept internationally. After the show, we had this fantastic opportunity to meet the mentor on our show, Dr. Shivan Isro Chairman. Uh, and we signed an agreement uh, you know, of cooperation with Isro for uh, technical co collaboration. Uh, and also all the three startups on the show, uh, Dhruva, Bellatrix and Skyru, we all signed MOUs uh, with each other and started collaborating as suggested by uh, our other mentor, uh, Sri Somnath. Uh, so thanks to the DD show for uh, bringing us together and giving this fantastic opportunity. With that, we conclude this edition of Startup Champions. Tell us about how you're liking the program. If you want to connect with any of our startups, you can write to us at uh, startup.india.gov.in. That's the email. And with that, we conclude this program. But this journey of learning, this journey of inspiration will continue. See you in the next episode. We'll take your lead for now. Namaskar.